Hi guys, Ursa Dia here, and I'm back with another Otomania episode. I know it's been a long time. It's been about a month since my last one. That was not what I had planned. Um, I've just been really, really stretched thin between starting my new job, finishing the spring semester, starting the summer semester, and there's a couple of things that have been happening around my house that have really just kind of prevented me from recording. But... I finally had some time, so I'm sitting down and I'm going to try to knock out one to two Otomania, so hopefully we won't have this problem again, but I am super excited for today's episode. So some of you guys may know and some of you guys may not, um, but one of my favorite Otome games, and it's definitely my favorite mobile Otome game, is Ikemen Revolution from the Ikemen series that Cybird creates. It is my favorite mobile Otome game by like far. Um, it's actually been my favorite mobile Otome game for probably about three or four years now. Like it's stayed in that top rank despite like <laughs> like other like Ikemen series games or other mobile Otome games coming out. Um, so I really really enjoy it but I wanted to make this ranking list because right now in the game there is an annual event, this is the third year that it's happening, called the Cradle Awards. Cradle is the country in which the game takes place. Um, and essentially what the Cradle Awards is, is it's a popularity contest where you get to vote for your favorite guy. Um, so just by doing like daily things on the game, such as like the duels and like completing like a chapter of the story, you get some sort of token. I believe this year it's hearts of that you can then use to vote for your favorite guy and you get special rewards on how well you did ranking overall and per character. And if each guy, each character makes like a promise, and if they end up winning that promise, then you get whatever they promised. Um, I know that's probably a really bad way to explain it, but like, I kind of make sense. Um, so like a good example is this year they changed it up. In the past, it was kind of just like a free for all, like you had three categories and you can vote for any guy in any category. This year they changed it up so there are three categories but you can only, there's only a certain selection of guys for each category. So it's a bit different this year. Um, but they, um, each guy normally pledges something. Like I know in the past like there have been ones where it would be like if this character beats this character, then you get, like, this special outfit. If this character beats this character, you get a special letter from him. If this character wins first place in this category, you get this fancy thing. Like, kind of things like that. That's kind of, like, what the pledges are. And then there's, like, ranking bonuses for just overall and per character. And this is probably either the most important or second most important event that I ever play in Ikemen Revolution, um, the other being my favorite character's birthday, um, in that I don't take these awards casually. Like, I go really hard. The first year of the Cradle Awards, I won 25th place in the over in the ranking for my favorite character out of like everyone who voted for him. The second year for the Cradle Awards, I won 13th place for his personal ranking. Um, and that's just for the Cradle Awards. I've also ranked within the top 20 for his birthday event for probably like the past two or three years as well. And this year, I'm planning to I'm aiming for top 10. I'm okay if I don't get top 10. If I'm in top 20, I'll be happy. But this year I'm aiming for top 10. I think right now I'm like 24th, 25th place right now. 
but I have a secret strategy that I use and I don't use money on this that I would like to also point out that like I am going against people who drop like 40 50 bucks to try to win this I do this entirely free like <laughs> that's how hard I like grind like I specifically save my items specifically for this event and for my favorite character's birthday so I rank high just from like pure grinding um but I wanted to do this tier list to kind of have my own popularity rankings because whenever these Cradle Awards happen, I don't actually vote for anybody but my favorite. So it's like kind of hard to like make it a popularity contest for me because it's like I just vote for my favorite and that's what I do. So this is going to be the actual popularity, I guess for my personal opinion on who I like and who I hate. Um, so it should be interesting. So I'm really excited for it. So we have all the guys here, um, including, and this, if you guys aren't super far in the game, um, this might have a couple of spoilers. I did add the new characters and I added the character from the Into the Looking Glass um, stories which are the sequel stories um, that right now they only have two out. They have Ray's in which I've finished both of his roots already <laughs> and um, they just released Lancelot's like yes or not yesterday but like a couple days ago I want to say I think like within the past week. Um, so there are a couple of characters that if you just started the game like you probably won't know. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free. I'm just going to, I guess, go in order of how they're like lined up. Um, I guess would be the best way to do it. So we have just regular S, A, B, C, D rank. Um, I can tell you this guy right here, Amen, easily D. Um, I actually almost renamed the D level as like utter trash. Um... <laughs> I really hate this character, and if you've played the game, you probably know why. If you haven't, I'm not going to say anything, but I really hate Amon. I don't like him. I don't even like his character design. I hate how he looks. Like, <laughs> even, like, how he looks. Like, typically, I like, like, long hair, like, long, like, silver-haired characters. I hate how he looks. Like, I just, ugh, I hate him. Blanc, on the other hand... I don't care for Blanc. Blanc isn't really my type. Um, I do enjoy his rabbit antics. Um, for those who don't know, the game is based off of Alice in Wonderland. You essentially play as Alice and you fall into the land of Cradle, um, in which the red and the black armies are at war and you're essentially just trying to survive until the next full moon. And the entire reason you end up in Cradle is because Blanc drops his, like, watch, and you end up following him. So he's definitely, like, the white rabbit. Like, not all of the characters have, like, immediate, like, parallels to the actual story, but in this case, Blanc does. Um, I'm gonna put him as C. I honestly, I just kind of find Blanc kind of boring, um, that is just me, but I honestly just think he's kind of like, eh. Like, he's sweet. Um, he knows how to, like, charm a lady, but I don't know. He's kind of just boring. Um, next is Dalim, a.k.a. Dumb. Um, he is a bar owner. Um, I like his personality. But I also don't like how, like, er overly, like, flirtatious he is. So I think I'm going to give him a B. He's really close to an A because I really do like him. But I'm going to give him a B. Just because, like, sometimes his, like, overly flirtatiousness kind of, like, bugs me. Um, his brother, even though they're not brothers, um... They absolutely hate each other. Um, these two are also based off of um, 
Tweedledee and Tweedledum. So, like, Dum, his nickname is literally Dum, and his last name is Tweedle, and then this is Dean Tweedle instead of D. Um, so th these are based off of the twins. Um, I don't like him. <laughs> He's a professor at, like, a boarding school that a lot of the characters went to. And he's honestly, like, he's very strict. And he's always giving riddles. And I honestly just, like, he's very, like, precocious. And I don't like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's going in a seat bank. Uh, Edgar. <sighs> I'm gonna put Edgar in a B rank for now. Um, he is the Jack of the Red Army. And he does lots of, like, secret missions. Um, has a lot of blood on his hands. But he's also, like, loves teasing and sweets, which is very interesting. So he likes to, like, play around and doesn't seem very serious, but actually can be. Um, Fenrir is the ace of the black army and the ace is kind of like the special ops person he's a li little bit trigger happy but he also <laughs> likes playing tricks so a lot of his like guns and stuff use special bullets that make his enemies do silly things like laugh for like a long time or like feel like they're being tickled or just like just really like crazy things that like they would actually probably prefer being, like, actually, like, injured um, than having to deal with whatever Fenrir's sick mind comes up with. But I love Fenrir. He's, he's great. Um, I love his friendship with Rey a lot. Har is very mysterious, um, very shy. He isn't too great with, like, any social interaction that's beyond, like, his two childhood best friends and the character who he ends up taking in, which is Loki. Um, so he takes a lot to warm up to you, but, like, once he does, he's, like, actually really sweet. He gets embarrassed really easily, which I find really charming. Um, and he's very, very powerful. I think I'm gonna put him as a B, though, because... He wasn't my favorite route to play, but he was really, really sweet. Jonah. Oh, God. Where do I put Jonah? Um, so, Jonah is very full of himself. Um, he is the queen of the Red Army. Um, he is obsessed with Milfui, I believe is how it's pronounced. It's, like, a French dessert that uses, like, lady fingers and layered with, like, cream and strawberries. I'll put a picture of it somewhere. I've never had it, but it looks really good. Um, I only know it exists because he literally eats it so freaking much. Um, he is obsessed with his little brother, Jonah. Not Jonah. This is Jonah. He is obsessed with his little brother, Luca. Um even though Luca absolutely hates his guts. You know, all of the brother relationships in this game are not really good. <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, but honestly, he's not bad. I don't know if I'd put him in a B. I did like his route. I, I, when I played his route, I went into it being like, I'm just going to get this over and done with because I didn't like Jonah. And then I finished his route and I was like, okay, I actually kind of like Jonah. But I don't think I like him as much as I like other characters. So I'm going to put him in C for now. Kyle. Okay. Kyle is hilarious. Um, Kyle is the Red Army doctor. I believe his number is actually seven. Um, because the way that the armies work is there's the like a deck of cards, and then there's like the regular soldiers. So it's like king, um, king, queen, jack, ace, and then one through, or I guess two through eleven. No, that can't be right. I'm gonna look it up because 
Now that I think about it, because once you get to, like, ten. Oh, so maybe, is Seth ten? Sorry, I'm, like, trying to figure out their numbers. Okay, so the rest of the, like, top soldiers are ranked, like, two through ten. Um, and so Kyle is number seven. He is the Red Army doctor. Um... He's also an extreme alcoholic. Um, and when I say extreme, I mean he is literally, like, more drunk than he is sober throughout the game. Um, in his route, he does, towards the end, at least cut back on alcohol. Um, but it's very interesting because, like, he's such a good doctor. Like, he's so reliable. Um, and I believe he's the youngest Red Army member. Um, the Red Army and the Black Army, part of why they're different is the Red Army, it does everything by bloodlines, so it's, like, Lancelot comes from, like, the line of kings, Kyle comes from the line of sevens, um, and so it's, like, family run, whereas the Black Army is, anybody can be in any position, it just depends on, like, your skills and, like, how good you are for that position. Um, so you can, like, change positions where you can't in the Red Army. Um, Kyle is the youngest, um, I believe. He's, like, also a genius. So he's 10 out of 10, the best doctor. Like, even the Black Army, like, sometimes, like, if they have, like, a really serious, like, injury and stuff, like, we'll call on... Kyle, which I think is really funny because you don't ever get to meet the Black Army doctor. Like, you know that they have one. But it's, like, really funny because if any of them are actually, like, in a critical condition, they call Kyle, and I think that's just really funny. And also, I feel so bad for whoever, like, the Black Army doctor is to, like, know that, like, your skills aren't as good as, like, the opposing, like, army's doctor. <laughs> but... Honestly, I love Kyle. He's super, super funny. Um, he's also, I convinced my friend when I was in Japan to, like, play it. She played the Japanese version because she's Japanese. And she ended up really enjoying Kyle, and she played his route first. I don't know if I'd put him in A. He's probably really close. Okay, I'm going to put him in B for now, but he is really close to an A. Whoops. Um, next up is Lancelot. Honestly, okay, so Lancelot is the king of the Red Army. He's kind of a bitch. <laughs> He's, like, very cold-hearted. And not, like, cold-hearted as in, like, Sundere cold-hearted. I mean, like, he's literally, like, stone-cold, like, his, like... I think his nickname is, like, the Beautiful Beast or something like that. Um, because, like, he's literally just, like, very, like, beautiful to look at, but, like, just very, like, stone cold, like, doesn't show emotion. Kind of just, like, does what he wants. And, like, he's fighting his own battles, but it's, like, bad because, like, you don't, like, understand, like, what he's going through until you really play his route. Um, cause like I hated him, like in basically every route I played, I hated him. Like even the other red armies, I was like, I hated him. And then I played his route and I was like, oh my God, everything makes sense. And then I just kind of felt bad for him. Um, I don't know. I feel like. He did change after his route finished, but I don't know if it changed enough for me to, like, like him. So I, I think I'm going to put him in a B, but he's really close to a C level. Uh, I'm trying to think. No, I'll leave him in B for now. Okay, this is Levy, I believe is how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, he is the new character that gets introduced in the Through the Looking Glass um, stories, which are essentially the sequel stories. Right now, in the English version, there are only two out. There are There's Rays, which I've already 100%ed. Both 
roots and then they just released Lancelots I think like a week ago maybe two weeks I, I want to say a week ago um he is a new character that gets introduced honestly I, I don't know a lot about him because I've only seen him in Ray's Root but I actually really love him so far I think he's like such a sweet soul and like the things that he does that would make you want to hate him like end up being like understandable of why he does it and honestly it was kind of like when they first introduced because I introduced what he looked like and like the new character like before like the root actually came out and whoops um and like it was kind of like one like that meme where it's like I've only had him for like five minutes but I would kill everyone in this room and then myself for him it was kind of like one of those things and then like actually playing the root just kind of backed it up like when I saw his character design one of my first thoughts was like oh no I hope he doesn't dethrone my favorite character <laughs> So because of that and because like I actually genuinely liked his personality and what I've seen of it so far in the story, I'm actually going to put him in A rank because I think he has great character growth potential. Um, so yeah, I love him. Um, next up is Loki. Loki is um, kind of like a wild card. Um, he lives with Har. Har is kind of like his mentor, his trainer. Um, Loki is essentially supposed to be the um, Cheshire Cat. Um, and he honestly, he's, I think, the youngest character. I want to say. I think canonly he's the youngest character. Um, he's kind of like a rambunctious, like, teenager. Um, but he's, like, really funny and very, like, flirtatious. Like, he's, he makes more advances on you than I think most of, like, the adult guys in this do. Um, but it's always done in, like, really good ways. Um, he is a bit possessive. Um, which I did have, like, a slight issue with in his root. But overall, though, it's not too bad. And I really like how, like, flirtatious and, like, teasy he is. So I am gonna put him in an A rank. Um, because I, he is one of my favorite characters. Uh, next we have sweet baby boy Luca. So Luca is the Jack of the Black Army. He is also Jonah's younger brother. Um, he hates Jonah's guts so freaking much. Um, he's honestly a sweet bean. Like, he likes to cook. Very domestic very shy he's very shy like it takes you a lot to warm up to him like not only is his root but like other black army roots like it takes him a while to like warm up to you but he is actually like just the sweetest bean like he is a cinnamon roll amongst non-cinnamon rolls I guess is the best way to put it I'm gonna put him in B though because he, I see him more as, like, my younger brother than, like, an actual, like, love interest. Like, even in his root, I was, like, I felt kind of awkward because I was just, like, I still kind of saw him more as a boy than as, like, a man. Next up is, I believe it's pronounced Moose. He's supposed to be, like, the Dormouse, um, so he, like, sleeps a lot and stuff. Um, he's one of the newer characters that's been introduced. Um, I think I'm gonna put him in C. Because, like, he's kind of boring. Um, I believe his name's supposed to be pronounced Moose. It's either supposed to be Moose or Mouse. It's spelled, like, Moose, like the dessert. Um, but it could be Mouse because of, like, a play on, like, his character. Like, who he's based off of. Um, but he's a diplomat of the country. Um... And he sleeps a lot, and that's honestly most of what I know. He used to be the ace for the Red Army, but he gave up the position because he didn't want to do it, essentially. 
Um, he, he wanted to be a diplomat instead. So he actually kind of broke Red Army rules because normally Red Army goes through bloodlines. But he was just like, yeah, I didn't want this job. Like, this is just like what my family does. And he was just like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. And so he gave his position away um, and became a diplomat. But he's kind of boring so far. Like, I, I haven't met him enough to really like form a good opinion so I'm just gonna put him in C rank um next up is Oliver so Oliver is interesting um and I I don't want to spoil anything um there's like one very obvious thing that you pick up pretty easily on like just from like doing like the prologue and like the first couple chapters of like other people's roots um but there's also, like, another thing that's really interesting in Hit. But he is, like, a pure Sundre. Like, I thought a different character was supposed to be, like, the Sundre character. Um, Oliver is literally, like, the Sundre amongst Sundres. Um, he, like, picks on you a lot. And, like, just very, like, not open with his feelings. He is, though, a genius inventor. He is the one who makes Fenrir's weird ass like bullets um essentially if you can think of it he can probably make it um he's really smart um I I don't know if I'd put him in A because like half the time I don't like him and half the time I do like him and I feel like most of the time that I do like him it's just because like he is a Sundre um Honestly, personality-wise, I do like him and he is A rank, but there's, like, one thing that keeps him from being A rank, and I will 100% say it's because he looks like a child. <laughs> um, and I know, like, if you guys know who Oliver is and things like that, like, that's a really stupid thing, but it is, like, something that, like, I, as well as Alice, do struggle to, like, get past, um, but you know what? No. Hmm. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll put him in A for now. I might change him, but I'll put him in A for now. Next up, this is 100%. So this is Ray. This is 100% an easy decision. I don't even have to think about this one. Um, Ray is the king of the Black Army, and he is my absolute freaking favorite character. And you guys probably would have known that just from, like, me showing, like, my rankings and stuff that I've got to him with him. Like, I love him to death. He is definitely, like... Actually, even if you guys, like, have been following, like, Otomania, you, like, you guys might have known this, because in my Valentine's video, um, with, test like, testing the compatibility, where I had, like, my three favorite Otome guys and my three least favorite Otome guys, he was third in my favorite Otome guys, so, like, if you guys know the characters of the game, you probably weren't too surprised that he was going to be my number one. Um, my roommate likes to make fun of me a lot because in the game you can get, like, items to, like, decorate your characters as well as, like, decorate the room that they're in, which is a very common thing to do in mobile Otomes. And my room in it is literally just filled top to bottom of just Ray chibis and, like, special things like... I have, like, stuff from his birthday stories. I have very, like, exclusive stuff from ranking really high in his, like, ranking for, like, the Cradle Awards, his ranking for his birthday. Um, it's, it's a lot. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with what I win for this Cradle Awards. Like, that's, like, a genuine, like, concern of mine is I, I'm running out of room in the room to put what I win because I know that I'm going to rank high. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, where am I going to put things? 
Um, so 100%, he is S tier. I love him so much. Like, he's low-key like a tsundere. Um, but he, once he, like, figures out his feelings for you, he's very bold. Um, and he loves to tease you. And I think that's why I actually, like, prefer, like, his tsundere over, like, Oliver's. Because, like, Oliver's just, like, blatant, like, insults until he decides that he likes you and then he like lessens up on the insults ray it's more of like a protectiveness and just like hey we're just friends we're just friends and then it's kind of just like are we just friends yeah we're friends <laughs> and then it goes into like an actual like relationship um but he constantly is, like, teasing you and making fun of you. Um, and I like it. He also has a cat, and I love his cat. His cat's name is Belle, and he's really sweet. He also loves to read. He's just very my type of guy, honestly. Um, next up is Seth. He is the 10 in the Black Army. Um... He's kind of girly, I guess. Is like I guess feminine is the better word. Like he's, I see him more as like, kind of like the gay best friend character, and I, it's bad because like I know he's not, but like that's kind of like his personality. I do know he has like a bit of like a secretive side, and he does have like a very like masculine side, but like. A lot of the time, he's, like, the one you go to, at least for, like, the Black Army roots. He's the one you go to for, like, dating advice or how to, like, dress nice for a party. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> he's just, he's a very feminine man. Um, I haven't actually played his route, so I don't know too much about, like, his personal storyline. Um, but honestly, I kind of just see him as, like, the gay best friend character, so I put him in C just for that. Next is Sirius, aka the mom of the Black Army. He is one of the two oldest guys, I believe. Actually, I don't know the... I guess he's the oldest member in the Black Army, but I guess overall, I know Blanc's the oldest... And then Lancelot and Sirius are the same age. I don't know about the others' ages to be able to, like, accurately, like, state their ages. Um, but Sirius is the queen of the Black Army. He's very mature. Um, and literally is just, like, the mom of the group. Like, to the point where, like, sometimes the members, like, actually joke around and, like, call him, like, mom and stuff. Um... But he's very sweet. He looks after you like he's your older brother. Um, he also likes to garden. His family runs a flower shop. Um, he sometimes helps Luca out with cooking. Um, honestly, I just kind of see him as like an older brother um, type. I haven't played his route either. Um, which is very weird because like I love the Black Army because it has like Ray and like Fenrir. And, like, I love the characters in the Black Army, but I did fully complete the Red Army before I completed the Black Army, um, which is kind of bad to say. But, I don't know. He's just kind of like, eh. Like, he's not my favorite by any means. So, I'm just going to put him in C for now. Next up is Zero. So, Zero is the ace of the Red Army. He takes over after Moose leaves. Um, he is very interesting because he has a very special upbringing, um, that I'm not going to get into due to spoiler reasons, but he is very different compared to a lot of the other characters. Um, he's very, like, I guess reserved might be a good way to phrase it. Like, he's not shy. Like, Luca's shy. Um, Zero, it's more like he really doesn't know how to, whoops, like, interact with people. Um, he was very much, like, a duty-first type of guy. And then in meeting you, you kind of, like, 
show him that there's, like, more to life than just doing what you're told to do, I guess, is kind of, like, a good way to put it. I really enjoyed him. Um, I think he's, like, a really sweet character, and, like, even when, like, he's, like, put in situations where, like, he needs to, like, capture you for, like, the Red Army and stuff, like, if you're, like, with the Black Army, like, he's very, like, polite to you, and it's kind of, like, more of, like, he's, like, the, like, I guess one of your first friends that you would make in, like, the Black, or in the White Red Army. Fuck. <laughs> in the, he's one of the first friends you would make in the Red Army, because he is just really caring. So, I'm gonna put him in A rank, because I really do like him a lot. I think, let me see if I want to move anybody. I honestly think this is, this is about accurate. Um, and like I said, like, I haven't played all the roots. Um, I've played most of the roots, honestly. Like, I've fully completed Ray's, Fenrir's, Levi doesn't have a root, Loki's. I'm on my second playthrough of Oliver's. I've completed Zero's. Dumb's isn't out yet. I've completed Edgar's. I've completed Har's. I've completed Kyle's. I've completed Lancelot's. I've completed Luca's. Blanc's isn't out yet. Dean's isn't out yet. I've completed Jonah's. Moose's isn't out yet. And I have not done these two. So, and Almond doesn't have a root either. So honestly, like, after I finish Oliver's route, I literally just have, as of now, two routes to, like, complete, and then Lancelot's, um, through the Looking Glass routes. And my guess is by the time I finish Lancelot's, or whoever's is, like, next, is probably when they'll either release the third through the Looking Glass route, or the route of one of the guys who doesn't have a route yet. But... So far, I'm really close to, like, 100%ing this game, at least what's been, like, released so far, and I don't honestly know what I'm gonna do once I hit that point, because I know, like, in Ikemen Vampire, which is the newest Ikemen series game, I'm, like, caught up on, like, all the roots. Like, I play the roots as they're released, and, like, when there's not a route for me to play, it gets so boring, because, like, well, there's lots of reasons why, and I'll probably get into it in a video just about Ikemen Vampire, um, because despite it being the new game in the series, there are a lot of things about the actual gameplay um, and like setup of the app that I don't like, which is why Ikemen Revolution is still my favorite. But yeah, so this is my ranking list. Um, I feel like it's actually pretty even spread. Like, I obviously have my absolute favorite character in the S rank, my absolute least favorite character in the D rank, and then everybody else, I feel like it's very evenly spread out, and I feel like that normally doesn't happen. Like, normally, like, C is, like, super long, and there's, like, one or two characters in A, but I feel like this is a pretty, like, even spread. So that is my ranking of the Ikemen Revolution characters. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree with my ranking. If you don't, um, who your favorite character is and who you are fighting for if you are currently in the Cradle Awards battle. Um, and I hope this actually inspired you to, like, check out the game. Like, it's 100% free, like, you can pay if you want, but honestly, you don't have to, like, I, w just through, like, saving and stuff, like, saving up with, like, crystals and stuff, like, I was able to do raise root completely premium, but completely free, just through, like, grinding and stuff, like, it took a while, like, obviously, the first time I played through, I could not, but after doing a couple of other routes and stuff, like, I was able to save enough to do his route entirely premium. So that's really cool. So this is definitely one of the best games that if you're looking for a free Otome, like this is one of the best that I would ever recommend because the storyline is really good. The characters are really good and it's 100% free if you want it to be. But yeah, so 
I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I release more Otomania videos or just other fun videos on my channel. And I hope you guys all enjoyed and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Love you. Bye.